Welcome to West Memphis Time Machine. Today we take you back to the February 8th and 15th, 1991 editions of the Highlander News. As the world is most progressive and becoming bigger in the world, as Jesus care about and keeping himself the best of us, and this is the case. Several weeks ago, a mini crisis seminar was held at the where West Memphis food is at the forefront of discussion. The school staff has been supporting the war effort by tying yellow ribbons on the trees around the school and the hanging ribbons above classes. The school staff will count with the school and will take as much as we can collect from the student body to send the food to the school. If you haven't, if you've seen any of the news in the back of those days, then you're sure to be familiar with the moment of time and silence in the news. Our two synagogues are doing the news as well. The staff of the Highland News would like to ask you to remember them as well and do some things to their work as well. Let's look at his school and present the last four ladies. They have three shows in the house. Opening night is March 3rd at 730 p.m. in the Highland Park. We will be two additional shows on Saturday, Saturday, March 9th at 7.30 and the final show on Sunday, March 10th at 2 o'clock p.m. Tickets are being sold at the door or call 697-7329. The cost of a ticket for adults is $8, students $6, and senior citizens $7 on Sunday only. Please come out and enjoy the show. Among 20 schools, West Milford placed sixth in the 6th Annual Family Dickinson University Programming Contest. The students that represented the high school were Daniel Sandin, Allison Smith, and James Cronin. Each student had to solve five programming pop problems in either basic or Pascal with their computer programming languages. This team was led by Mrs. Engel, a mathematics and computer teacher here at West Memphis High School. And now to Chris. This time, if family's interested in learning more about science, culture, and how students play things, the students will stay in West Memphis for a few weeks. In this time, they will learn American customs and English words and expressions. Brenda Wyman, the project coordinator, believes this not only benefits the students from Spain, but has a great effect on those high school students here in town. Families that take part in the program must give the transfer students a home life atmosphere. The first meeting of the Technology Club is held on Monday, February 5th. The club will meet weekly in room 251 on Mondays at 215. The club involves learning about technology and using it to solve problems. This is a new club for West Memphis High School students. Anyone interested in the club should stop in on Monday. Now, let's go to our man on the stage, Mary Cicinato, with this week's Key Report. Here, snowboard is another one of sports weather. This is my name is the North Jersey Ski Report. As you can see, we're not having beautiful skiing weather as it's raining here today. In the past week, we've had record-breaking high temperatures with rain in the past couple of days, which has caused us to lose a lot of snow. The streets are still skiable. However, there's a lot of bare rock, mud, and slush. And you beginners who spend a lot of time on the ground might want to sit out for a week or so until it gets cold again, because you'll be getting awfully wet. 
full tank there that is going to possibly be some snow, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday, and the temperatures could be dropping down to the normal February temperatures, which has been the high 20s, low 30s, about the end of next week, so maybe they'll start blowing some snow again, and good luck, and we'll see you on the slope. <laughs> West Milford High School senior class had the privilege of viewing the motion picture Hamlet. Approximately 250 students took off Wednesday and traveled down Route 46 to the theater. Many students were absolutely intrigued by the whole experience. The senior class was required to read Shakespeare's Hamlet, with the only English classes, and this opportunity allowed a comprehensive understanding of the tragic play. The annual Valentine's Day dance will be held on February 15th in the West Milford High School cafeteria. It will be held from 7.30 until 10.30 p.m. The price will be $3 per person and $5 per couple. There will be food, music, and pictures of you and your Valentine. Please come out and tell us. The West Milford Justice Chapter is sponsoring Data Match. Data Match is a program where students answer a questionnaire and their answers are played together and can the students match together based on their responses. Each student has the opportunity to find out who they are compatible with in each of four grade levels in school. Price is one dollar for each class day. You ever notice how Becca always does data match at the same time as Valentine's Dance? So those poor souls who can't get a date have data match to fall back on. For example, our man in the hall, Dennis Avada, he tried it. Now we just now here he is with the question of the week. Hi, I'm Dennis Zavada here with the question of the week. Most people don't realize that TV was invented with the purpose of furthering the education in America. But so far, TV has regressed to the point where all anybody ever wants to watch are silly cartoons and violence. So therefore, this week's question of the week is, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Okay, I'm here with Matt Lincoln, Dan Gustafson, and uh, Jay Romeo. Matt, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Okay, I would like to be Fauci. Okay. Like, rip people apart, kill them, lose their heads off, and have sex with their dead bodies. Okay, Dan Gustafson, what cartoon character would you want to be and why? I'd be Pete Puma, because he's really cool. Okay, Jay? I like Mighty Mouse because he's got a cool theme song. Okay, this is three senior views. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, this is Heather, Kim, and Karen. Karen's a sophomore, and Heather and Kim are uh, freshmen. What, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Lady Mouse, because he's so strong and he's awesome. Okay, what about you? Super Fraggle, because he's cute and he's little. And Darth Maul, because he's lazy and he's adorable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, this is Kevin Bauman. He's a freshman at the high school. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, it, Kevin, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Or Kim, Why? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Bennett, he's fresh and he's worth nothing, but he goes to high school. Say, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Batman. Why? He fly. He fly? Batman can fly. He can just fly. What's your problem? You know anything? Oh, well. He's an idiot. Forgive him. Okay, this is MC Meredith. She's a sophomore at the high school. If you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Why would Coyote? Why? Because, uh, Rock's trying to have a guy. Okay, that's a good reason. There's my good friend Bethany Keeney, she's a sophomore. Bethany, you could be any person guys to any. What would you be and why? Bugs Bunny. Why? He's the best. He's the best. What else? He's uh, Chris Gallagher and Chris, uh, Chris Ackerson. This is my choice for class couple right here, guys. If you two could, if you, if either of you could be any person guys that you wanted, what would it be and why? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, that's great. What about you, sir? To be Rainbow Bright. Okay, this is Jay Chief Benjamin, senior at the high school. Jay, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Definitely be Mickey Mouse because Mickey Mouse is my hero. I, I love Mickey Mouse toy. I, I admire the guy. I, I love his movies. Okay, thanks, Jay. This is Ben Chazelle, he's a junior. Ben, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Well, uh, Garfield, definitely because he's just the coolest cat in the whole world, and I love cats, so Garfield.
Okay, Ben, you should get rid of that some of that peach fuzz. You know, this is a really cool physics teacher at the high school. Ms. Dennis, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be? Funky Winker Bean. He likes his quick notes. And when I have full duty, I think of him sitting there with the machine gun. Definitely Funky Winker Bean. Okay, Funky Winker Bean. Ms. Colleen, Dorothy and Colleen, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Definitely Donald Dunn, because he's always creative. Even though he keeps moving, he's not a wimp like Mickey Mouse, and he doesn't just sit there. Yeah, but you can't understand what he says. So he's got a cute accent. Okay. <laughs> be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? I would be Crusader Rabbit. Who's Crusader Rabbit? It's uh, one I remember as a kid. In fact, it's the only one I can remember. That's why I picked it. Okay. Mr. Mayor has a lack of memory. Okay, this is Mike Weaver of the United States Navy. Mike, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Uh, Woody Woodstock. Why Woody? He's too adorable. That's it. <laughs> Navy man saying he's too adorable. Thanks very much. I'm here with big senior Eric Terms and Gutter. If you could be any cartoon character, what would you be and why? Hong Kong food. Why? Because I like his style in fighting crime. He comes out of the file cabinet and everything. He's got the cat. Good man. Okay, thanks, Eric. Okay, this is Megan McSorley, student council president, girl state governor. All kinds of different things. Megan, no pressure here. Uh, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? It's going to be Hobbs from Calvin and Hobbs. Why? Because he gets to sleep all day, and then he gets to play when Calvin comes home, and then he gets to sleep again. Uh, is there something uh, you don't get enough sleep? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is Colleen Gillis. She's a sophomore at the high school. Colleen, if you could be any cartoon character, what would it be and why? Um, Ariel from the Little Mermaid. A neat voice. A neat voice. What? Want to become a singer someday, maybe? No, but she's pretty. She's soft, so she's really neat. Okay, thanks. Good evening. I'm Kurt Snyder. I'm sports for the Highland Community. The Freshman Boys basketball team is having a successful season despite their loss on Saturday. Last Saturday, in February 2nd, the freshman team lost to an undefeated Essex Catholic by a score of 86 to 46. The game was played at Essex Catholic High School. So far this season, the boys are 9 and 4, and they will try to improve their record tonight against Clifford Scott. The game will be held away at Clifford Scott. This season, this season, freshman team leading scorer is Eric Neglia. Coach Collins hopes that Neglia's continued scoring will be a plus for the rest of the team and will stop their losing streak at two games. The West Milford JV boys basketball team demolished Wayne Valley by a score of 85 to 38. Last Tuesday at home, Rob Legrassi led the Highlander offense with 14 points. He was followed by Grayson Keller and Jim Haggard, who had 13 points each. Ben Smith and Scott Seifert added 12 points apiece. The boys JV team will be challenged in their next game as they go up against the tough Clifford Scott team, which will be played at Clifford Scott at 4 o'clock. We wish the boys the best of luck in the game on Friday. The West Milford Varsity Boys basketball team recently upgraded their record to 11 wins and 7 losses. They defeated the Wayne Valley team by a score of 77-62 to last season night at home. It was the first team the West Milford had ever beaten Valley. Let's go to the videotape. Junior forward Dave Murphy had an excellent all-around game against the Indians as he scored the first nine points of the game. He ended up with 17 points, 13 rebounds, and four blocked shots. The leading scorer for the Highlanders was Tim Griffith, who had 18 points. Ed Riley had 16 points and grabbed 12 boards while he played an outstanding defensive game on the Indian center Dave Mezlerman. On the other contributors to the Highland team was Brian O'Malley, who had 13 points, and Billy Pylock, who had 6. Pylock and Costigan played superb defense. Each of them took their charge. The Highlanders' next game is today down in East Orange as the boys go up against the number 9 team in the state, Clifford Scott. Tip-off time is 4 o'clock. Good luck to the boys' varsity team. The girls' freshman basketball team improved their already outstanding record with a win last Friday. The freshman team with a record of 10 wins and only one loss to the State Valley last Friday, February 1st. 
the West Wolf and Highlanders won by two, by a score of 60 to 40 in a game that was held away at Passaic Valley High School. Preceding Friday night's game, the freshman team played Wayne Valley away. On Monday, the freshman team won a score of 56 to 36. Forward Jimmy McClellan scored 17 points, while point guard Jill Schultz scored 16 points. Congratulations to the girls, and good luck to them also. The varsity girls basketball team reported a loss recently to the minutes their season record to 12 wins and 4 losses. This past Tuesday, February the 5th, the Lady Highlanders lost to Wayne Valley by a score of 41 to 37. The game which has been held away at Wayne Valley High School was the second between the two teams. The last game, West Milford beat Wayne Valley by 16 points. The lead scorer for the Highlanders was junior Kirsten Peterson, who scored 14 points, while senior Sue Osek had 11 rebounds. The Highlanders held their opponent to five points in the fourth quarter, while they scored 21 of their own points, but because of their lack in scoring in early points, the victory went to Wayne Valley. The Highlanders' next game will be a tournament against Hawthorne High School tomorrow at 1 o'clock at Wayne Valley High School. We wish the Highlanders the best of luck in their upcoming games. Varsity Bowling. The West Melbourne High School varsity bowling team placed a disappointing second in the conference. In the absence of Coach Kip, the team lost its first place to Fake Valley by a score of 12 to 9. The Highlanders would have needed a 14 to 7 victory to take first place, but instead settled for a third consecutive second place finish. Let's go to the videotape. On the same day, the JV team defeated Wayne Valley by a score of 3 to 0, giving the first place team finish. Also, in bowling news, the varsity team placed fifth in the State Valley Tournament, giving the team members John Comer and Steve Short seats on the second team all county. Excuse me. Finally, JV member Rob Farley placed third in the conference handicap tournament held on Monday, February 4th. Congratulations to all of them. The West Memphis Girls C team won their fourth race on January 31st. Let's go to the videotape. The C team defended Wayne, uh, defeated Wayne Valley by 52.41 seconds, Wayne Hills by 141.29 seconds, and Verona by 157.48 seconds, and DePaul by 237.38 seconds. Monica Pierre Grossi, a senior at West Milton High School, finished first for the team and first overall. Amanda Earl Jr. finished second for the team and third overall. Stacey Keo finished third for the team and ninth overall. The team's record now stands at 11 wins and one loss. The girls were scheduled to race yesterday, but was canceled due to bad weather. The varsity wrestling team didn't have much of a winning, didn't have much problem winning its ninth match in 12 outstanding by defeating the fall last week, 58 to 18. Let's go to the video tape. Craig Bayer, 103 won by an easy 18 to 6 decision. Craig Sapatsky won 112, won by forfeit. Mark Citro, 119. Downed his opponent 20 to 3 on a technical fall. Other winners for the Highlanders were Ted Agrea, Steve Silveria, Scott Stiles, and Matt Wickerelli, Mark Tech, and Gary LaSalle. The win put West Milford in the State County Tournament, which takes place tonight and tomorrow at West Milford High School. Come out and support the wrestling team. The big race happened this weekend in Vernon. There were raccoons going on West Milford High School's own Ralph Cook. It all started at the front door of Mr. Cook's home when he saw his name, Tess, spotted a large raccoon. Tess burst out of the threshold of the house to hunt down and kill the trespassing beast. Mr. Cook immediately followed in a high speed pursuit. There was a coon, a dog, and Mr. Cook leaping over obstacles, dashing across his front yard. 
cutting sharp corners where I see the attempt to control his vicious dog. And then, oh no, he wipes out. He's down for the count and he's in agony. His ankle is made up and the bone is shattered. Mr. Cook has broken his ankle. He laid on the grass, rolling and screaming in unbearable pain. Tough break for the big man. Fun was had by all anyway. And that's the news. Back to Jason O'Pat, the wannabe judo of West Mobile High School. Jay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the West Milford High School Outing Club will be holding a ski trip on Sunday, February 17th. Unfortunately, Mr. Cook will not be in attendance. The cost of the trip will be $25 for a ticket and $15 for rental. This includes transportation to and from. The bus will be leaving at 7 o'clock a.m. and returning around 6 p.m. <laughs> the trip will be held at Jacksonville Ski Resort in Pennsylvania. The Alley Club will not profit from the proceeds of the trip. The club runs an average of six trips a year to give students a chance to experience nature as well as have a good time. And not a trip. Show our support and safe return to those assigned to Operation Desert Storm, special education classes, and Mrs. Drexler's class gave the teachers yellow ribbons to hang on the classroom doors. The reason for having the color yellow as a symbol is because there was a man who was in jail who was soon to be released did not know whether or not his girlfriend would want him back. He wrote her a letter and told her if she wanted him back, put a yellow ribbon on the oak tree out in front. When he returned home, there were yellow ribbons all over the oak tree. The yellow ribbons are a symbol of our support and also our wish for a safe return. And folks, now back to Joe. Seniors and seniors have already signed up for the March 16th SAT that will be given at the high school. The deadline was today, so if you've not already signed up for the test, check with your guidance counselor for late registration. The Tufts Committee will be holding their annual ice skating trip to Men and Women. The trip will be held on March 15th, and the cost will be $5. This will include transportation, refreshments, and admission to the unit. Tufts will also be sponsoring other activities, including the upcoming trip to Spot 23 on March 5th. Tufts will be renting the spa for a night, and students will get unlimited access to facilities, including the pool, weight rooms, and aerobic classes, and much more. The cost will be $12. This will include transportation and assessment. In the past, this evening has been a success and tough members hope to obtain the same type of success this year. In a recent tough meeting, representatives from Community Against Substance Abuse presented an anti-drug abuse program to the members, which will in turn be presented to the general population of the school through tough. A written survey will be distributed through the school to determine the amount of support it will receive from the students. The program involves voluntary drug testing and drug and drug free students will receive a card allowing discounts at local businesses. The program is voluntary and results of the test will not be released to the school or local police department. The initial testing will be done in the hospital with students running most of the program. <coughs> this year's senior prom will be held at Wayne Manor. The theme song will be Wonderful Tonight with Diana Clapton. The colors for the prom are light blue, white, and black. The goods will be on sale starting February 25th for $70. For more information, contact Daniel Dunn, a prom committee officer in the cafeteria during all lunch period. I'm Jay Pat with Chris Amato from Kirk's Night on Sports. And this, guess what, folks? This has been the Highland of Lane. And we are out of here. Wednesday, February 6th. The movie has been sh was shown at the Total Art Cineplex. The theater was reserved especially for West Milford students. All right. The trip cost students $3.50 each, and each student had to bring their his or her own lunch bag. Over 200 students went to the trip, which was organized by Mrs. Fuge. <coughs> the purpose of this trip was to allow the students to see Hamlet perform, since they had been reading a play in class. The trip was also an expense.
unexpectedly filled with some excitement on the way home. Two of the school buses carrying students were involved in an accident on Route 23. The accident came as a result of a truck, which broke an asphalt, sending two of its tires bouncing across the highway. The tires struck a station wagon, then continued on, on to hit the buses. Fortunately, nobody was seriously injured in either the station wagon or the buses, and the buses were undamaged. The field trip to Macbeth on March 8th was canceled due to the death of one of its actors. All English 3C classes were supposed to see Macbeth at Berkeley School of Art in Morristown, New Jersey. If this trip field trip is rescheduled, we'll inform you as soon as possible. And now with Dave. So, this is the team to sponsor in the name of Spot 23. Tickets are being sold for $12 each, which will include transportation, full use of the cafeteria, and spa facilities, and dancing. Dancing and food. The party will be held on Friday, March 1st. Buses will leave the high school at 8.30 p.m. and return at 1.30 a.m. If you haven't purchased your ticket yet, don't worry. They will be on sale the week we return from vacation. Decker is now entering another year in competition. The state competition is held yearly at the Parsippany Hilton. Students compete in several occupational areas, such as power and accessories, general marketing, and, and several others. The students who compete in the states are people who have placed in regional competitions. Dates will be held on March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Good luck to all the students. This year's junior prom for the class of 1992 will be held on March 21st at the Wayne Manor. The prom colors chosen by the prom committee will be lavender with black accents. Although having initial opposition, the chosen theme song was approved thanks to the efforts of the committee. The theme song is Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. Following the winter break, winter break junior volunteers will be selling prom dates. Will be selling prom dates. Each will be each will sell for seventy dollars per couple. This counts will be awarded to all juniors who sold cookies for the junior cook, cookie sale. The West Milford players are beginning another show, are bringing another show to West Milford. On February 15th, 16th, the 22nd, and 23rd, the West Milford players are performing Agatha Christie's The Mousetrap. The performance will be held at 8 p.m. at the Hillcrest Community Center. Tickets are available by calling 728-2860 or 697-3400. The cost will be $7 for adults and $5 for students, students and seniors. Hope to see you there. And now back to Satish. Awesome. Citizens Against Drug Abuse, Substance Abuse, has offered a new way for students to be substance free. Defy It is a program started in Texas. There's a new, innovative way of rewarding students who are drug free. Defy It is a program run by the students. It is completely voluntary. Right. Students who sign up get a t-shirt and an ID card. With this ID card, students get a special discount on food products and other items such as tapes and clothing and clothing in community stores. The students who are in this program are also, voluntary, also, volu are also voluntarily drug tested. If they prove, positive in the, they prove positive to drugs in their system, students get their cards taken away but do have a chance to be retested. These tests are totally confidential, and the police and parents are not involved. CASA is trying to get this program started in West Milford under their supervision. A tape describing the fight has been shown to sad and tough members in February, and they felt it was a valuable idea that it should be instituted in West Milford. CASA will be presenting this program to the Board of Education, and upon, it, uh, and upon their approval, will be presented to the students. Mrs. Drexler's and Mr. Pullman's special education class took place in the annual Special Olympics bowling tournament on Sunday, February 3rd, 3rd. at the Astro Bowl in Clifton. This, the tournament consisted of various teams from, Passaic, from the Passaic County area. Those receiving rewards from Mr. Drexler's class were Billy Bassang, Sean Corral, Charlie Cassell, and Scott Donchlevich, who placed first. Second place finishers include Thomas D. Moran, Nicole Renhow, and Sandy, Sandy Matthews. Nine out, of 12, nine out of 12 students from West Milford High School participated, including some in the Mrs. Drexler was quoted as saying, there are no losers. Everyone who participated was a winner. 
And now to Mike Costello on sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Highlander Sports. The boys' fencing team is having a good year with a record of 4-3 and three and a ranking of 5th overall in the conference. Jordan Pitar ranks 5th in the boys' FA, and Gio Morales is 5th individual in foil competition. The girls are doing equally as well, with a record of 5-3 and three and a ranking of 3rd overall in the district. Athena Cosmos plays 5th individual in girls' foil. The next meet will be February 23rd at Voorhees High School in Glen Garden. Coach Lyapis feels both teams have done a very good job, and he sees a lot of potential for next year's team. But let's not look too forward into the future. Come out and support the fencing team now. The West Milford bowling team ended their season with nearly 2,000 points. The team ended their season at the HBCT tournament at the Butler Bowl. Some winners of the tournament were Greg Pyatt and Kevin O'Malley. Congratulations to the team. The girls JV basketball team is now first in the conference with a record of 13-2. and two. The team's top scorers are Becky Hink and Lauren Schultz. Their top rebounders are Robin Hink and Carolyn Murray. The next game will be on Monday against West Orange and then another on Tuesday against conference rival Lakeland. The girls varsity basketball team is having a great season this year. They are third in the conference and are now tied with the record for the most wins in 12 years. They're on their 13th victory with the leading scorer, Kirsten Peterson. She has had 25 points in each of the last two games. The last victory of 54-52 to 52 was against Crowell. They'll have a game on Monday, February 18th, against West Orange. Come and cheer the victory. The fast-paced boys' freshman basketball team is off to an impressive start with a 12-5 record. Leading scorers are Jay Joybecker with an average of 12 points and 15 rebounds, along with Eric Neglia and Tim Collins, who each had 13 points on the average. The team plays with a man-to-man -man defense and a run-and-shoot offense. Even with their excellent plays, the team lost a tough game to the Caldwell Chiefs last Monday. The next game is the Kennedy Tournament semifinal on February 15th at Our Lady Queen of Peace School. Good luck. They did it. That's right. The West Milford <coughs> Varsity Wrestling Team is 1991 Passaic County Champion. They finished the tournament with a total of 111 points, while conference rival Lakeland finished second with 90 points. The first night of the tournament, West Milford jumped out to a quick lead with several pins. But this past Saturday, the Highlanders put six wrestlers into the final. Sophomore guards Greg Kajaki and Scott Skiles and seniors Mark Kitcho, Chris Kasha, Steve Finavaria, and Mark Kitcho. Mark Liptak and Matt Lucarelli also entered the final. The Highlanders' only champion this year is super sophomore Miles Larson, who pins his opponent in the second period. Now the Highlanders will face Eastside in Patterson at the state sectional competition. The JV wrestling team had an outstanding season so far this season. The record now stands at 8-0 on February 13th. They went to a tournament in West Essex. It was a tough day for most of them. In the 140-pound weight class, there were two wrestlers, both from West Milford, Dave Henry and Walter Easterbrook. Walt pinned Dave in the third period. In the 145 weight class, Eli Easterbrook wrestled in the final. Although losing, he still had a good day coming in second. The Highlanders had two third-place finishes, Paul Larson and Dave DeBoer. The team has been doing well and are looking forward to their tournament this Saturday, the 16th, at 10 o'clock a.m. Come and support the guy. West Milford ski team placed first and second in their last two meets. Leading the way for the boys team is Scott Wood and Dean Ferrari. For the girls team, Jen Mato is skiing to another successful season, along with Amanda Earl and Monica Piragrossi. The team needs to place first in the next meet in order to win the conference. So come on and support the team next Thursday, 5 o'clock p.m. at local Vernon Valley Great Doors Ski Area. Also, bring some hot chocolate for all those freshman day teachers. The boys' JV basketball team lost a well-fought game to Clifford Scott, 73-64. to High scorers for this game were Ben Smith with 16 points and 9 rebounds. Rob LaGlossa had 15 points, and Tom Dunbar added 12 and 10 rebounds. The boys' record now stands at an impressive 12-3. They'll play tonight against 6 o'clock Newark Westside. The West Milford boys varsity basketball team proved their record to 12 and 8 with an exciting 82 to 78 victory over Corwell on Monday night. Brian O'Malley led the Highlanders scoring attack with 22 points. 
Ed Riley contributed with 12 points and 11 rebounds, while Dave Murphy added in 13 for the winner. The boys are currently fourth in the conference with a record of 8 and 5. The next game will be on Tuesday, February 19th at 4 o'clock <coughs> away against Lakeland. And now back to the feet with more news. On personal integrity. This film was sponsored by our student council and students in the Distributive Educational Clubs of America, DACA. This film was to show students how important integrity is and to stand up for what is right. The film was distributed by a motivation media company and the cost of the film came to an astounding $360. The teachers, the teachers along with the students agreed the film was definitely worth, worth it. Love is in the air, especially at West Milford High School. Sophomore class is holding the annual Valentine's Day dance tonight, February 15th, to celebrate the spirit of Valentine's Day. This exciting activity will begin at 7.30 and end at 10.30 p.m. Tickets will be sold at the door, costing $3 per person and $5 per couple. There will be music, dancing, and food in the cafeteria of the high school. Also, a photographer will be there to take pictures of friends and couples to remember the fun-filled night. So come and join the excitement along with getting your picture taken with your best friends and sweethearts. Now to Bill Pollock with the interview for the National Art Honor Society. Hello, I'm here with Dan Newman, um, president of the National Art Honor Society. And Dan, how did the induction ceremony go last Tuesday night? Pretty well. Uh, it wasn't long and drawn out. It was pretty short. A couple speeches by myself and Lori Hager and uh, Mr. Tully, the art teacher. Uh, after there was the usual refreshments, and then uh, the parents and the friends who came were able to uh, look look at the setup we gave of the uh, inductees into the National Art Honor Society. So it's pretty went pretty well. That's good. Um, what got you personally interested in art? Uh, I guess uh, initially, I just started copying comic books. And I guess it led from there. I just uh, from there I uh, started drawing other figures and uh, got into figure drawing. And I liked that for a while. And I guess it wasn't until I took the art program here that Mr. Tully pretty much uh, got me interested in art all around. That's good. Um, could you explain some of your artworks for us? This is my self-portrait. Uh, oh sure, uh, which I uh, completed recently. Uh, it, it was done in a a type of watercolor called gouache, which is more opaque, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much just a self-portrait, um, not just the facial, but uh, the surrounding uh, characteristics also are supposed to be a self-portrait. This is uh, <clears throat> a pointillism project. Uh, all The whole project is uh, just dots from an ink pen, and uh, it's obviously just a pair of boots of a friend I met a while back. Very impressive. Um, are you planning to pursue a uh, career in art by any chance? Uh, yeah. Uh, after I get out of high school, I was hoping to uh, pursue a, a career in either graphic arts or illustration. And uh, I was just accepted to Pratt. I'm not sure if I'm going to go. don't like the city too much. But yeah, I am uh, uh, hoping to pursue a field in uh, art. That's good. Um, do you have a favorite artist, anyway? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I pretty fond of an artist named John Byrne. John Byrne, huh? Yeah, he's a, he's a comic book artist. <laughs> so I like him. Thank you very much. The West Milford Becker will be sponsoring a free enterprise activity night on Saturday, March 2nd, from 7.30 to 9 p.m. The program is designed to teach sixth graders of West Milford about free enterprise system and exchange of money. The students will participate in such activities as a life, as a life size game of Monopoly with West Milford Story and an activity booklet with crossword and word find puzzles. Refreshments will be sold and there will be music for dancing. Parents are also invited, so come join the fun. The West Milford High School players are once again presenting the annual musical. This year, they are presenting the, they are presenting the high school's 29th musical, which will be My Fair Lady. The show will be presented on March 8th, 9th, and 10th in the high school auditorium. 
on Friday, March 8th, and Saturday, March 9th, performances will begin at 7.30 p.m. And Sunday, March 10th, at, at 2 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at the door or by members. Prices will be $8 for adults and $6 for students, $7 for senior citizens attending the Sunday performance. Any further ticket from information is available by calling 697-7329. There is a postmark deadline of February 25th. Many, peop many people put a great deal of time and effort into past musicals such as Grease, Little Shop of Horrors, and The Wizard of Oz. The same effort will go into putting together yet another dazzling performance by the West Milford High School players. Two seniors, Monica Pagliosi and Kristen O'Malley, both accomplished and received the highest award in Girl Scouting, the, the Gold Award. They received their award on Tuesday, February 12th, at Queen of, at Queen of Peace Church. Both girls have, have been in Girl Scouts for 12 years. They put a lot of effort into this, into this award, like earning four badgers, earning a career exploration pin, and putting many hours into projects. Everyone should be, should be. This has been this week. This our show with some highlights of the amazing Highlander Hoop last game against Wayne Valley. Thank you.